Today is October 1st, and I'm in a cornfield near Paulding, Ohio, so Northwest Ohio. This corn was planted on June 8th, but in this particular area, they were extremely devastated by the wet weather this spring. So there's very few acres of corn actually planted in this particular area. Starting to notice some ears that are hanging low that are starting to droop and actually uh, hang down low. So started to investigate it. So this is 5140 non-GMO. And as I look closer, I see the evidence as to why these ears are starting to hang low and starting to droop. So as I zoom in here, you can actually see the corn bore that has affected this ear shank. It's tunneled through the ear shank and it's actually disrupting the ability for that plant to move photosynthates and, and carbohydrates to the ear itself. So that's gonna have an impact to yield as we're gonna show here in a little bit. But more concerning at this point, this corn is not black layered as a whole other than those ears that uh, have prematurely black layered is my concern is, will this affect the ability for that plant to retain the ear? And I'm certain it will in this situation. There's a lot of evidence of, of corn borer feeding. As you can see, I uh, moved to a, another plant here. And as you can see, you can actually see the corn borer itself. You can see that thing twisting around with that dark head. And you can see the evidence of, of that tunneling that's occurred in the ear shank itself. Here's more evidence as I zoom in. Um, you can see the evidence of the frass, but there's actually no ear shank here, as you can see. So the, I'm very concerned of this crop here and the ability for it to retain those ears. Now, we had a fair amount of ear droppage last year in specific fields that struggle with pollination. That is not going to be the case in this specific field. As you can see, by the butts of the ear, pollination was very, very good. Last year, we had some challenges with the butt of the ear uh, not pollinating, and that's where we saw the pinch shank or the drought shank, and we had some challenges with ear retention there. This is just due to corn borer feeding, and this field was a particular magnet because of the few acres that were planted in this specific area to that second generation. But here's the impact it's going to have on overall yield. So these three ears to the right, they've actually, uh, I noticed that there was no feeding, no evidence of feeding, I should say. The shank was intact, it was, uh, it was whole, it was complete, and it was healthy. These three ears to the left, each one of them had, had the ear shank that was actually tunneled into. And as you can see, the overall size of the ear has been impacted because the inability for that plant to move sugars and, and photosynthates clear to the ear. Now these ears that have been impacted by corn borer, they've actually, even though the rest of the field has not black layered, you can see evidence of these ears actually reaching uh, black layer prematurely. So they're much lighter, lower in test weight, and uh, eventually I'm much more concerned at this point in its ability to actually retain the retain the ear itself. So uh, maybe be on the lookout if you planted corn that uh, uh, corn hybrids that were particularly untraded, uh, trying to maybe save a few costs because some of these areas that didn't have a lot of corn planted have become a magnet for corn borer and uh, I'm concerned about ear retention. Thank you.